Good evening. We're back once again tonight with Brother Earl, and we've changed program around a little bit today. Um, I have a scripture I want to read for you. It's Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13. It says, You will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I have um, a poem tonight, but uh, before we get into that, a friend of mine sent it to me from Florida, and I just wanted to share it with y'all. Um, she's into poem writing now, and um, I think you might enjoy it, but before we get started, um, Ron, would you like to pray for us tonight? Our praises, Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for another day that you've given us to live with you, Lord. We thank you for the fellowship that you've given us by giving us the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the opportunity we have to come to share with you the experience that we have in our lives, that we can lift the hearts and soul of the people yeah, out there that are going man. through problems, those who are sick, those in the nursing homes who get discouraged because there isn't that much to do sometimes, mm -hmm. and those in the hospital, especially, Lord, and sometimes don't know exactly what the next hour is going to bring to them because of the sickness they are. So I ask you, Lord, to, to bless them of what we do here tonight, anoint it, and as well as these, we'll give you the praise for asking the praise of holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ron. Uh, yeah, no, I... Okay, uh, this is called The Gift, and uh, Carolyn Day, she used to be a Stegmeyer, she was married to a Stegmeyer, but um, she told me she had been writing a lot of poetry, God has been giving her um, some things that she said she's been writing down, so um, she sent me this last week, and I thought, well, I'm going to read this. It's not very long, so be patient with me. It says, The gift you gave to me, dear Lord, no one can buy or afford. The day you hung up on the tree, you gave life, gave your life, and set us free. Yeah. And I think that come right in with Easter coming up. Amen. It says, The price you paid for all our sins that we would live and trust in him. The Father God who sits on high, let's call on him while he is nigh. The trumpet will sound on that final day. I hope we'll all be worthy. That's what I pray. So live for Jesus, the fullest and best. And I pray, brothers and sisters, we all pass the test. Jesus loved you and gave us grace. She says, I long to see your beautiful face. And then the other one that she wrote, it's called Faith Under Fire. Faith under fire, that's not my desire. I want to be set free, as he said I should be. Walking in his love that's sent from up above. Believing, receiving the things he has for me. Taking each day one at a time. Knowing God's plan is truly sublime. Walking with Jesus, we know that, that up there we can get, get through this life with hardly a care. Angels around us, his beauty will see that living for Jesus is the way we should be. Life more abundant, now I can see this is a plan he has intended for me. Amen. And it's Psalm 62, 1. It says, my soul finds rest in God alone, and my salvation comes oh, from him. There. Okay, Earl, do you want to say something here? Go ahead, do it. Um, but um, anyway, we'll bring Roscoe up. I'm not singing tonight so you'll have to put up with suffering with him <laughs> come on up thank you Wilma you're welcome <laughs> thank you mom I, 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 I needed it, it. 
this way. Uh, just no. They might not see me, I'm so tall. <laughs> anyway, it's always nice to be with God's people, isn't yes. it? Huh? Yes. Yeah, that's good. And the Lord tells us about that in the Matthew 18, 31. Not to forsake the assembly of those that's with him in two or three. He will be there. Yeah. Uh, I've selected, I told Brother Earl, old, Butter, old Buddy Starcher song back. He wrote it in the early 90s, or I mean the early, or, not the 90s, early uh, 19, in the 40s. <laughs> and... Uh, since Easter's right around the corner and we're celebrating his resurrection, I thought it'd be nice to sing this song. Yeah. Today is a day to do a good deed For some lost soul that's really in need So give all your love, you've got plenty to spare You'll be planting a rose in the garden of prayer. Through prayer and though I planted a seed in the garden of prayer. With no worry, no care, it was just a good deed. Though I know it's still there in the garden so rare. And I know it still grows in the garden of prayer. So I plant and I rose in the garden of prayer. And I know it's still there in the garden so rare. Now I know it still blooms and blossoms so fair. And I know it's still there in the garden of prayer. No sinner today, repent of all costs. Christ died to save and seek the Lord. So get down your knees and pray to Him there. You'll be planting a rose in the garden of prayer. So I planted a rose in the garden of prayer. And I know it's still there. In the garden so rare. Now, Lord, I like to thank you for the dream of his day and the home God prepared in heaven above. And the home God prepared in heaven above. Amen. Bless Praise name. God. All right. Get them capable on the parking here. Give me some of the Too many keys. <laughs> mm. we got it. Well, since you're singing on things about Easter, I'll do the same thing. He saw my sin and knew it would bring me out of his heaven that he believed that I was worth saving. So he came down to earth as a man took a sin that condemned me Paid the price for me so I could come in. Lucky to heaven was hung on a nail on the cross where he suffered. His love prevailed. He opened the floodgate, parted the veil. Lucky to heaven. Was hung on a nail. Bethlehem's mission 
had a quiet beginning. They knew he was coming, but he died on a hill with so many watching. And even history says that he lived. A dozen of claims why he entered the race and died like he did. Ducky to heaven was hung on a nail on the cross where he suffered. His love prevailed. He opened the floodgate, parted the veil. Lucky to heaven was hung on a nail. He opened up the gate, parted the veil. Lucky to heaven was hung on a nail. Yes. yes. Praise God. Praise God. Well, hallelujah. I'm so glad for the goodness and the greatness of God. Yeah. So glad that God's merciful to us, that he loves us. And he doesn't reward us according to our sins and our iniquities, but according to his love. Yes, one day we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ, but not to be judged for our sins. He said we'll be judged by, because of our works, whether they be good or bad. What was our motive? How's come that we've done things that we've done? You see, God knows it all. We think that we can hide things a lot of times, but no. We ought to be able to realize that whenever we read the scriptures and see how that Jesus taught the people. How that he taught them. You know, I thank God. My another songwriter come along and he wrote another song. Jesus built a bridge. Two pieces of wood and three old rusty spike nails. He built a bridge. You see, my in the old economy of God, yes. There was a place called purgatory, and there was hell. You see, Jesus told that rich man, he says, now there's a great gulf between Lazarus and where you're at. A great gulf. And you can't get here, nor Lazarus can't go there. But you see, Jesus built a bridge. We've got to cross it in this life. We can't cross it in the next one. And so I, I praise God for his mercy and for his grace that we're able, my, my, to get ready while we're here. This is the time to get ready. Everything, everything that we get from God comes through Jesus Christ. And it comes because of what he did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And so, you see, it wasn't nothing good that we done, but it's what Jesus done. I, and I think of another old prophet that he spoke out and he said, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And you see, this is the place that we've got to make the decision. It's not after we die. We've got to do it now while we've got time, while we've got an opportunity. There's been a lot of people who said, I'll wait until tomorrow. Honey, can I tell you something? Tomorrow didn't come. It didn't come. And so, you see, today's the day of salvation. That's what Jesus said. And listen, he said that the great surge is on and multitudes are seeking peace. They're, they're seeking after fame. They're seeking after fortune. 
They're seeking after the pleasures of this old world. They're seeking after power. Seeking after education and knowledge. They're seeking in human relationships, in marriage. But you see, they haven't got that peace. Because that peace is not in your head. It's in your heart. Amen. When Jesus left this old world, whenever He was talking to His disciples after the resurrection, He went into the room where they were at. And as He spoke to them, He said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives you. See, the world can't give peace. There might be pleasure in the world for a little while, but it doesn't last long. You see? And then we begin to seek after something else to satisfy that longing that's in our heart. And only God, only God can feel that longing that's in our heart. And He can only do it whenever we seek Him with our whole heart. We seek Him. You see, why? Because we owe Him everything. We owe Him everything. I didn't do nothing to earn my salvation. I couldn't. I know before I got saved, I told people I'm not too bad. But I was just as bad as that fellow that was the worst. Yeah. Didn't realize it. And, and you know, my, my, we, we look at people today, we look at these old drunks going staggering down the street and we say, well, thank God I'm not like that. But you know, I, I preached last week, if you were listening, if you weren't, you missed it. Why? I, I, because Jesus, I, I, whenever he looked at the people, you know, he says, you can't justify yourself by watching somebody else. You see, Jesus is the perfect example. And Peter says that he is our example and we are to walk in his steps. Amen. Don't follow the preacher unless he's preaching the gospel. Don't follow the church unless they're trying to follow after God. It's not the name over the door that's going to take you to heaven. It's what you believe in your heart. And whenever you believe in your heart, I mind that Jesus I, I was crucified. He was crucified. He was buried. And on the third day, He was resurrected. There's where we get our justification at. It's not because that we're better than somebody else. Or we're just as good as they are. I've heard that a lot of times down through my life. My, my, you talk to people, you invite them to come to church, and they I stand and look at you and say, I'm just as good as them people go to church. They might be as far as goodness is concerned, but what about righteousness? You see, there's a difference between goodness and righteousness. And Jesus said there's none good but one, and that's God. And then he told that a young man, he said, don't call me good because there's none good but one. You see, in other words, what he was saying is, if I'm not God, don't call me good. People look at me and they say, Earl, how are you? I say, I'm fine. Well, I, I wish I was. I'm pretty good. I said, yeah, I am too. But when it's all said and done, I'm probably prettier than good. <laughs> Why? Because there's none good. No, not one. I didn't say that. The Bible says it. You see, multitudes in the valley of decision, seeking after all kinds of things to try uh, to fulfill that empty place within their breast. But honey, can I tell you, uh, they're seeking uh, to fill up their purse with wealth. They want, a, they want wealth, but their soul is bankrupt. What does that mean? I mean, there's nothing there. It's empty. The only thing there is what they put there, and that's not God. You see, we need what God puts in there. 
Jesus said, uh, uh, whenever you repent, he said, uh, then I'll send the Spirit uh, and he, he'll not only be with you, but he'll be in you. He's inside and he guides and directs our paths uh, uh, that we will walk in righteousness. Not the way that we think is right. Why? Because he said there's a way uh, that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He tells us in his word, he says, man's heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, we, we don't know our own selves a lot of times, what we're capable of doing. All you got to do is look around you, turn the TV on and listen to the news. And you wouldn't think that people were capable of a lot of things that's going on today. You see how capable that mankind really is. It's no wonder that Jesus said, the way to heaven is straight. The gate is narrow. And there'll be a few people that'll find it. I don't know about you, but honey, that makes me stop and take an inventory of myself. And I'm a child of God. But he says the way to destruction is broad. And the gate is wide. And many people will be there that will find it. And I know. We, the first thing we do, we make light of that and we say, well, uh, there's going, well, I'm going to have a lot of company. Well, honey, let me tell you something. There's going to be a lot of people there, but they'll not be company. They'll be blaming you because they're there. They'll be blaming somebody else because they're there. And, and they'll be cursing everything that's happening uh, because they are there. But you see, they didn't make a decision not to go there. The decision is up to you. It's not God. It's up to you. Jesus said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. The place that he prepares depends on you. Yes, there's a heaven to gain. Yes, there's a hell to shun. My God made them booked. Where are we headed? Are we headed towards heaven or are we going downward? Are we on the downward spiral wondering if we'll ever get stopped? All you have to do is look around you and you've got to wonder about the country in which we live in today. Where are we going to stop? All the things that's going on in our schools, in our uh, uh, politics. Uh, and I'm not a politician, I'm a preacher. And it's a terrible thing whenever you use, lose confidence uh, uh, in your leaderships uh, uh, in the country, honey. All you got to do is look in a lot of these other places today, uh, how they're trying to heist their, uh, their leaders out. Uh, how long is it going to be before it happens here? You see, we take very little bit of thought uh, about the conditions uh, uh, that our country's in today, uh, my, uh, that our homes are in today, that our families are in today. We take very little bit of thought uh, about the condition that our churches uh, are in today. We think that everything's all right, but honey, it's not all right. We're going into eternity unprepared to meet God just as fast as the unlocked wheels of time will let us roll right on into eternity. Is your soul empty? God would fill it up for you if you would allow him to. If you would allow him to, God would fill up your soul. But you see, that's your decision. Why? Because there's a lot of empty space in there. A lot of empty space that is filled with the pleasures of this world. It's filled uh, with the, uh, the want to be riches of this world. And, and so you see, today is a day of salvation. Jesus loves you. And he said, greater love could no man have than this. That he laid down his life for his friends. Amen. You see, 
And today he's not telling us that he wants us to die. He's telling us he wants us to sacrifice our lives. He said, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If we'll present ourselves to him and let him use us instead of us trying to use God. You see, we, we try to make him a little God and us a something great. But honey, it's the other way around. I serve a mighty God. I serve a great God. I serve a God that's able. Am I? He tells me in his word, I, I'll make you a place to stand. I'll make you a place to stand. I know people was concerned about I, I die, and I said, I, it don't excite me. I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to leave just any day now. People look at me sometimes and they say, well, now, preacher, if you don't slow down, uh, you're going to have a heart attack. I, I, my, I don't know the better way to go. Yeah. My than to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't know the better way. You see, I'm ready to leave just any day now. Just any day. Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples that the angels told the disciples that uh, I, I would never, uh, Jesus led them out there on the mountain uh, and he lifted up his hands and he began to bless them. Uh, and as he began to bless them, he began to ascend upward. There were two men standing there in shining garments uh, as they, everybody was standing watching Jesus go up into the clouds. Uh, and they looked at him and says, Why stand ye here gazing upward? That same man, that same one you see going there is coming back in like manner. Honey, he's coming back in the clouds. He's coming back to take his church away. Are you a part of his church? I didn't say, are you a part of a denomination? I said, are you a part of his church? Or are you? If you're not a part of his church, then how in the world do you think that you're going to go with him and spend eternity with him? You can't go. There's no place there. Only for the people of God. That's all that'll be there. And if you can't go to church with people down here and get along with them, how do you think you'll ever get along in heaven? Because that's all that's going to be there. And he says there's not going to be no uproars up there. People are going to be shouting and praising God all the time. Oh, yes, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that God will have us doing. I don't know what it is, but I'll find out when I get there. People look at me sometimes, they say, well, you're all sure yourself, yes. How come? Because I've got 1 John 1 and 9. He said, if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. You see, Jesus loves you. He loves you. And he's standing with his arms outstretched. And he's saying, whosoever will. Yeah. Come unto me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you can find rest for your soul. Heavenly Father, reach down today and touch that unseen multitude. God, those that are under the sound of our voice, save the lost, heal the sick, Raise up an army, God, that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That'll preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified for the sins of the world. Father, we realize without you we can do nothing, but with you all things are possible. Have your way, and we'll praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Uh, is our prayer until this time next week.